even all the changes in technology, like AI, which didn't exist back then when I was learning. It makes me wonder how I would learn to code if I had to start over from scratch today. And we'll go through a few W's. The why, the what, the where, and we'll go through some helpful tips while you're learning, including some examples of how you can use AI to help you while you learn, and when you've learned it. We'll talk about what's next. Why? I think this is actually the most important question you need to answer before you literally do anything else. Why do you want to learn to code? Do you want to create your own game? Are you interested in finding answers from data and data science? Is there a mobile app you want to build or a SaaS product you want to start a business with? Are you interested in machine learning with AI or you heard about the software engineering salaries and you just want to get that bag? Which despite what the haters and the gatekeepers say, I think it's okay to want a career that pays well. Although I do admit that money isn't the best motivation to have, it still answers the question of why you actually want to learn to code. Since this why and how strongly you feel about it, it's what gives you the motivation to push through when things get tough, because they will get tough. For example, when I was in my undergrad over 20 years ago at this point, my initial reason for choosing computer science as my major was because I wanted to make video games, like 90% of the people in my class. Of course, I failed miserably and I dropped out of CS. But years later, in my last attempt, the reason why I wanted to keep trying to learn to code was because I had a business idea and I wanted to create a software as a service company. And a secondary reason for that was because I wanted to run my business remotely because remote wasn't really a thing back then. So I could live as a digital nomad and, and travel the world. Based on that, that's how I planned my learning path and that's what kept me going. So what's your why? What's the reason you want to learn to code? Let me know in the comments. I bet over half of you are going to have something related to video games. Now, understanding my why helped me answer my what, because I was able to use that to reverse engineer how I could get to that point. Like, what language should I learn? Since I wanted to build a web-based SaaS product, JavaScript is basically the prerequisite. It's the language of the web that's also able to do some backend as well. So if your reason is similar to mine, or if you want to get into mobile development, I would suggest JavaScript as your first language. If your why is to become a data scientist or to get into machine learning, then Python is the better choice. Python is more human language based, which might make it easier for some to learn. But honestly, you can't go wrong with either JavaScript or Python as your first language because there's a ton of resources for them. They're also the two languages that AI is most trained on in case you wanna use it as a tutor, which we'll talk more about this later. But what about something more niche, like game development, since we know C++ is the dominant language in the industry? I'm still gonna say JavaScript or Python. There's Phaser or Pygame, which are libraries you can use if you want to develop small games with either of those languages as you are starting out. But the point of choosing one of these two is that it has a ton of support. Once you've learned them and you understand the programming concepts, a lot of that will be transferable to another language. And by then, it will be much easier to pick up a second language like C++ or Gscript for Godot, which is open source. Now that you picked what language, what do you actually need to learn? We gotta start at the beginning, the fundamentals. You learn the syntax of the language, what variables are, the data types, and there's a lot of them. Operators like your equals, plus, and minus, the math-like signs, and how to use them with programming. Learn about the control structures, which is using conditional statements, like if, else. Use them with loops and, and learn about functions, which are blocks of code that you can reuse. Now, as you're learning the foundations, make sure you're not just reading or watching videos, but that you are also applying and practicing what you learn. And I'll share a bunch of resources later in the video. One last thing to learn is to learn how to learn. I recommend the course Learning How to Learn by Dr. Oakley on Coursera that you could take for free. It will give you some ideas and strategies like chunking, spaced repetition, or active recall that you could use to learn more effectively as you are trying to learn to code. Now that we have the what out of the way, where can you learn to code? I do recommend writing the code in an integrated development environment or IDEs like PyCharm for Python or Visual Studio Code for Python and, and JavaScript as well as many other languages. If you want to get started right away without setting up a local environment on your computer, there are online IDEs that you can use like Stackblitz, Replit, or Code Sandbox. 
if you are just starting out from scratch, I actually recommend using resources or websites that have built-in code editors alongside the lessons so that you can start writing code sooner. It also has the added benefit of giving you immediate feedback on the code you're writing. And of course, you can't use the excuse of not setting up a dev environment to get started, which is something I've done in the past, so don't be like me. As for where you could find the resources, try Free Code Camp, Code Academy, Exorcism, Scrimba, or MOOC.fi. I've personally tried all of these resources, some as I was learning how to code myself, and others I've tried out as resources for my mentees. All of these sites have learning tracks or specific courses you can join in JavaScript or Python. I think they're great to test out, especially if you're not sure about committing to learning to code or if this is even the right thing for you. Now, if you want a more bootcamp-like experience that is full stack, there are resources like the Odin Project, App Academy, Open Academy, or 100 devs. Unfortunately for the Python folks, these are mostly full stack JavaScript, though uh, App Academy does have a Python backend section. Now, these aren't boot camps in the traditional sense of having a cohort and going to a classroom. They're more organized with their own communities on Discord or, or elsewhere. You can form a study group to act as your cohort and, and then work through assignments and projects together. And these sites will often have forums and communities where you could ask for help as well. Now, with all these resources, audit a few and see which one resonates with your learning style the best and then pick one. But once you pick one, make sure you stick with it. And this is very important. Stick with it and finish it. If you get stuck on a problem, reference the documentation. Get used to reading it. But getting stuck on a problem is also where AI can help you. To be able to use AI effectively, you need to establish the context for it. I kind of foreshadowed this a bit at the beginning of the video. There's a journalistic approach called the five W's, where you establish the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. The more W's you can answer in the prompt that you give to the AI, the better the results you will get. For example, the first time I ever encountered a for loop, I was so confused. I had to find a whole bunch of resources so I could have different ways of it being explained to me for, for something to finally click. But with AI, you can do something like that in one place. Here's an example of a prompt I would use. It's answering a few W's. It defines the who's. The AI, who is an expert in JavaScript, and myself, who's a student in high school learning to code for the very first time. Obviously, I'm not a high schooler, but I'm using the information to give it context. I want it to explain to me things as if I were a high schooler, so nothing too technical. The what is how for loops work in JavaScript. The where is sort of my preference in how I want the information presented, which is to provide a code example in plain language and another option with an analogy. Now, the most important thing to do with the information your AI tutor provides is to actually take that code snippet and they make it really easy to copy and paste to do just that and copy and paste it over to your IDE and run it. And then you could go nuts and change some variables, change the one to a two and see what happens. If you don't understand why it's happening, copy and paste that code snippet to the AI and ask it to explain to you in steps what it is doing. Or maybe I accidentally deleted something and now it's giving me an error. You can ask it to help you debug where the issue is. Or maybe I'm expecting a certain sequence to be printed, but it's not correct. You can ask it why. I know I was going on and on about applying what you're learning as you're working through your lesson, but I've found many of these resources, the problem sets they provide might not be enough for you to practice with. So here's how you can help yourself by asking the AI to provide you with some problems to solve. And to solve it, you can write it in your IDE to produce what it wants. But if you get stuck, have the AI check your work and ask it to give you an explanation on where you went wrong. And if you try the basic and intermediate problems, but you're not ready to work on the advanced problem, ask for more intermediate problems to gain more confidence. And then try the advanced problems anyways. And you know by now, if you get stuck, you could ask the AI for help. Have it explain to you line by line until you understand it. If you get to a point where you have a good grasp of the fundamentals, now you can ask it to give you some project ideas. Using a very similar prompt from before, I now have a list of simple projects based on my skill level. I also asked it to be broken down into steps that I could take in case I get stuck somewhere and I want to reference that to the AI. Now, if you learned something new or if this saved you some time, give it a thumbs up or you could subscribe so I could keep creating more content like this to help you out. I've seen suggestions of using AI to create a study plan, but I don't actually recommend it if you are just starting out. 
But if you already know how to code and you understand the programming concepts and you're trying to learn another language, then go for it. If this is your first language, use something that already exists because these language plans have been improved on over time and they've worked for many others before you. You just need to pick one and dig in a bit deeper and use AI to help you if you need it. But my most important tip in using AI is to not let it solve the problems for you. You need to be able to solve the problems on your own. This is how you learn. That's how it will stick. And just follow the format that I showed you and adapt it to the specific problem you are working on. Whether you're later in your journey and you're building out a feature like a dynamic form, or you're working through fundamentals still and you're learning variables and true-false conditions. But if you're still at this stage, if you are still learning, please, I beg of you, please make sure you are the one writing the code. Now, while you're learning, I have some tips to share and mistakes you should avoid based on my past experience. My first tip is ABC, always be coding. You are not a tree. You will not learn how to code by osmosis. So if you're just watching a bunch of videos or just reading tutorials, there's no such thing as passive learning in coding. You need your hands on the keyboard and always be coding. Tip two, have a plan and be consistent. If you picked one of the resources I mentioned, that's great, but what's your plan for it? Having a plan also means having a time and or place for this work so that you can build some consistency. You could treat it like school and dedicate a specific time every weekday at the library as your learning time. Or you're doing the 100 days of code where the rules are to code for at least one hour a day, or in this case, work on the resource you picked for an hour a day and then post about it on social media for accountability. I recommend Blue Sky. My next tip is to learn version control early and push your assignments to a repository somewhere to get used to saving your code and pushing it. So Git is pretty much the big game in town, although there are a few Git hosting providers that you could choose from like GitHub, which everybody knows about, Bitbucket, GitLab, or CodeCommit, which is from Amazon. In my first two years as a professional developer, the four main commands I used were git branch, git add, git commit, and git push. So you don't need more to complicate things. There's also a great tutorial from GitHub that walks you through how to do these things. For tip four, I've mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. Focus on one thing at a time. There's a phenomenon called shiny object syndrome that myself and many of my peers have suffered from, where we let shiny new things distract us from finishing projects. If you picked Python, don't change it to COBOL halfway because you heard it was the hot new thing. And that was a joke. Or if you were working through the Odin project, don't just drop it and start over free code camp. Stay focused and focus on one thing at a time. Next up is to avoid tutorial hell. It's fine to do a handful of tutorials to build up confidence because tutorials make you feel safe. It makes you feel as if you're being productive, but you don't want to get stuck copying other people's code over and over again. The real learning happens when you take off the training wheels and work on your own projects. Which brings me to my next tip, build projects. If you are afraid or don't know what projects to start, use the prompt I shared earlier as a starting point on what to build. It can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. Many of the resources I listed also have projects as part of their learning plans, which is great because you can see how other people build their projects and get ideas from them. Tip seven is to find a community. When I was learning, tech Twitter was great back then, and I actually made friends and my first tech network from other people doing the 100 days of code. Yeah, I made friends through hashtags, and many of them are now also senior engineers, or some of them are also staff engineers. And nowadays, Discord servers seem to be where a lot of the community building is happening. So join some and try to be active there. They're most likely going to be your first network. Find a study group, accountability partners, ask for help, and I think most importantly, try to help others. The next tip is learning how to debug. And I think it's especially important if you want to get to a point where you have AI write the code for you, which if you're just learning how to code, it's, it's not now, but rather when you're more experienced. And when you get to that point, you need to be able to figure out what went wrong so you could fix it. So learn how to read error messages and use the debugger. And my last tip is to have a growth mindset. I wish someone told me this when I was just starting out because I tried and failed so many times to learn how to code. Those times I gave up was because I thought I was too stupid to learn. 
But it wasn't until I was a bit older and a little bit wiser, that's when I developed a growth mindset. That's when I realized it wasn't gonna be easy because life's not easy and, and I had to embrace the difficulties. I had to view it as an opportunity to learn and grow rather than some fatalistic and foregone conclusion like being too dumb. And I really believe that you have to have a growth mindset to succeed as a software engineer because there's always going to be some setback and you're gonna to need to adapt to those changes. And now you've made it. When you've learned the basics, which I define as being able to work on and complete simple projects on your own, what's next? Well, build more. And by this, I mean find bigger projects, something that excites you. If you want to become a game dev, build a game. Or maybe you're just a gamer, so then you can build tools to help your gameplay. Like if you play Final Fantasy XIV and you happen to get really into crafting, but you want to make sure all the crafts that you sell have decent margins based on the materials that you buy. So you build a scraper that tracks all of that and, and put it in a nice UI so you can make informed decisions. Not against the term of service, is it? Or maybe you're into fitness, so you build a fitness tracker for you and your friends. Which sounds kind of boring, but you include some AI functionality that creates custom workout plans for users based on their goals. My point is, if you're actually interested in the thing that you're building, you're gonna be much more willing to learn whatever it is you need to learn to build it. Like databases, APIs, authentication, UX, or, or DevOps if you're deploying it somewhere public. And not only will it help you learn new skills, it will help you create a stronger portfolio. And while you're building the project, try to learn in public. Share your goals and progress in the social media flavor of your choice. You could blog about it, you could post about it on Blue Sky, or maybe you could even make a YouTube video about it. People just love underdog stories and stories about progress. You might even find yourself picking up some like-minded friends along the way. At this point, I do also recommend trying to find ways to get better at reading other people's code. As a senior software engineer, I honestly read more code than I write. Because it's not just my code, but those of my teammates as I'm reviewing their work or we need to discuss some implementation together. So you can find an open source project somewhere and see how they build their application and get used to reading and processing code in your head. And related to that is to try to find ways to work in a team setting with other developers. That might look like joining hackathons or something more personal like starting a business with friends. Unless you're Jonathan Blow, creating software is a team sport. So this is how you get a taste of what it's like to work with others and, and you'll learn why clean code practices are super important. You'll also encounter implementation or merge conflicts and you'll need to figure out how to resolve it. If your goal is to break into tech and get a software engineering job, then at this point you should start practicing your data structures and algorithms since it's very likely going to be required for job interviews. There's the good old cracking the coding interview, which I think is a good introduction to what to expect if you want to interview with big tech companies and the smaller companies that try to copy them. It also gives you some data structures and algorithms problems to solve, but once you outgrow the book, I highly recommend another YouTuber, Neat Code, and his videos as well as his website that has a ton of free resources that I think are very well curated. The other thing is you should also apply for jobs sooner than you think you're ready. I'm gonna be honest, getting your first job is going to be a slog, especially nowadays with all the tech layoffs. It's, it's not a guaranteed thing. So you need to start this process sooner because it's likely going to be a marathon as you're iterating over your resume and learning how to get better at interviews. And of course, there's the standard advice of learning your tools, like the command line, your IDE, your, your language of choice. This is all so you could become a better and more effective developer. So just remember, you want to answer the why so you can reverse engineer how you could get to that goal. You pick a language based on your why. You pick a learning path and stick to it and be consistent. Apply what you learn through practice and projects. Once you mastered the basics, start thinking big. Build projects you find exciting and start adding complexity to it. Now I mentioned using AI as your tutor as you're learning to code. But a lot of people are still wondering if it's even worth learning to code with the threat of AI replacing developers. And the answer might surprise you. So if you want to find out what I think, click here and I'll see you in the next video.